Hey there, welcome back. I'm just Shannon Lowen, your friendly librarian, and I'm back with some book love, so let's chat. It is Friday in May. We are two weeks from the end of school and the beginning of summer. For a teacher, that is a magical, magical time. It is the worst of times. It is the best of times. <laughs> let's merge those two lives together, that teacher and book chatter. Um, I have lots of books to talk to you about. Some ones that I finished, hey, it's kind of out of the screen there, but some that I finished since the last time we've talked, some updates on some things that we have going on, um, some book hauls, and some added um, recommendations. Stella's roaming around down there and knocking into my plants that are all ready to go out on the porch, but it is currently May 12th, yes, currently May 12th in Ohio, which means it's a little shady, no pun intended. Um, trying to put your indoor plants outside or even to start planting for the garden. So um, I need to do it. Maybe I'll do some tomorrow, but I'm still just a tad bit hesitant. It's not super, super warm today. Um, and we had a frost not too long ago, but maybe I'll start putting some out. I did buy two big hanging baskets from the cheerleaders fundraiser this week that they always have right before Mother's Day. And I have those hanging on the front porch, but those are easy just to take down and bring inside. So I'm not sure. We'll see. All right. So as always, let me get this table cleaned off so we have a cleaner slate for me to start talking to you about some books. Get out your list because you're going to want to add some of these titles to your to be read list. I'll talk a little bit about summer reading, but not a whole lot because I do hope and I do say <laughs> that this year when school is over and summer has started, I will make more videos. I want to talk to you about things like a summer reading list and go through some of these series. Like I just finished a Kate Carlisle. She had a brand new book come out and I've read all of her books so far. So I would like to do dedicated videos to talk to you um, about some of those, my favorite authors and my favorite series um, or my favorite genres, that too. So I promise, gonna do it this time. Uh, so give me a minute to get it all straightened out and I will talk to you in a minute. All right, that's a little bit better. Um, I can't remember if I've worn this shirt before or not on one of the videos. I planned on um, updating that this weekend, and uh, I will link it below. But it does say Book Nerd, and then on the back it's got a bunch of pictures of, like, book stacks. So I will take a picture of that and also insert it here for you. Pretty sure I've mentioned my Harry Potter wooden earrings. I love these guys. Once again, I will see if I put those in there and try and link those for you, too. We need to update our little um, calendar here. Today is... Friday, the 12th of March, <laughs> the 12th of May. Looks like I filmed last in April, so we're getting there. These are the books that I have finished since last time I talked to you and I want to talk to you about. These are the books that are also written by some of those authors I'm going to be talking to you about. So definitely want to mention some of their other works. I usually light our prayer flag candle. We still have quite a bit to go on this one, but you know, never want to run out of a good candle. So I did pick up a new one at Wheatberry Store up at, or Wheatberry Bookstore in um, Chillicothe, Ohio. This one is called Sexy Librarian. It has, um, what do you call that? Hints of notes of mint, nutmeg, and citrus. Uh, it is by Fly Paper Productions and it smells heavenly. So we're going to try this one out today. Um, and have a little something going on while we're getting ready to settle in for a little evening here with you to talk about books in my own little personal library. I so enjoy sharing it with you. And being able to just suggest books to anybody who needs suggestions, I've got them. I love talking about books. I love telling you what I've read or what I want to read or what I've heard about. Um, I just really, really enjoy it, and I'm glad that you're spending a little time here with me. You don't have to watch the videos. You could just listen. Um, I just like doing them on YouTube because I like to show you the covers of the book, and a lot of that kind of stuff is visual to me. But if you are someone who has more time when you're driving or working around the house or whatever, you could totally just listen to these. We're just drinking plain old coffee. I know it's in the evening. It's like 5 o'clock. Um, took me forever. I had to stay after school to catch up on grading some notebooks because it's the end of the year, end of the quarter, and I didn't want to bring them all home, so I worked a little late, and then by the time I got here, I don't even know, it might be six o'clock. No, we're around five o'clock. That's not terrible. Um, 
before I'm able to get um, settled and started with you. And although it is a little rainy and overcast, I have the porch door open because it is lovely outside. Stella's outside laying in the grass, um, drinking up the sunshine, and you will probably hear her um, because our neighbors, who used to just be part-timers, uh, are now full-time and they have two dogs, a new puppy, and um, another dog that is crazy. Um, and they, when she, when those two dogs come out, she just can't stand it. She goes right to the fence, goes crazy. And then they all come over, sniff each other and walk away like nothing ever happened. Um, so you're probably going to hear that a time or two because, um, he does take them outside quite a bit because Cookie is a boxer, I think is what that's called. And has a lot of energy. Hopefully Cookie will not join us through the open door, but it is a possibility, even though we do have a fence. I think Cookie could probably get over or under or around the fence somehow. <laughs> All right, let's get started. Okay, so it looks like the last book that I talked to you about back in episode 34, I believe, was um, Colleen Hoover's It Starts With Us, which is number two in that series. Um, it ends with us and then it starts with us. Looks like that's the last one that I talked to you about. So that puts us at book number 22 and shock and surprise we're going to start with an Agatha Christie. So the Agatha Christie we are going to start with this is the 22nd number 20 this is the 22nd Agatha Christie in the chronological reading group that I'm in uh started in January of 2021 or December January yes um of 2021 is that right nope we started in January of 2022, and we are 22 books into reading Agatha Christie in chronological order, and that is with um, the ABC Murders. Now, I could never get a copy of just the ABC Murders on its own, so I have this book. It's called Postmark. Yes, Postmark Murder, and this one is a four-in-one, four-in-one volume. It has. A Caribbean Mystery, Nemesis, Murder in Mesopotamia, and Appointment with Death. So this is not the one that I'm talking about currently. <laughs> what did I do with ABC Murders? I must have read it online because I didn't get a copy of it at all. Let me look. All right, let's try that again. It is the ABC Murders. So this one is a paperback one. This one is coming up later in our chat. This is Murder in Mesopotamia. But this is the ABC Murders, a Hercule Perot mystery. This was number 22 in our chronological reading. According to Goodreads, it's the number 13 Hercule, Hercule Perot. If you watch this at all, you know how frustrated I am to try and get the correct numbers. It has baffled me from the very beginning. I thought, how easy is it going to be? We're going to read Agatha Christie as she published her um, books, novels, stories, etc. We're going to read her in chronological order. No, it is not that cut and dry. Um, so it has been ugh, very frustrating, but an interesting experience nonetheless. Uh, but according to us, hmm, I think I've been saying number 22. Number 25, this is my 22nd book of the year. Number 25 in the Agatha, Agatha Christie chronological reading. Number 13 with Hercule Perel. You probably don't get one flying flip about any of that, but it has consumed my life for the last... Um, you know, year and a half. So I am very meticulous about it. And it's, it's irritating that I can't give you like an official number. We follow my Facebook um, Zoom group. We follow the list that is put out by the Agatha Christie um, website. It's like the official Agatha Christie estate, I guess is what they call it. I can't, I don't know how, how it is, but um, it's on their website and they published a chronological list and that's the one we're following and we are calling gold. Sometimes it agrees with Goodreads, sometimes it does not. Um, but this isn't my favorite because you can tell it's not a vintage copy. This is just a copy I picked up. Uh, looks like at the book rack of Murray for $4. Um, and it was originally $5.99. So it's not like it was a great deal or, you know, any kind of great um, edition. It's, this one's just published by Berkeley. But um, I did really like it. This is a really, really good read. I gave this a four out of five stars. Um, most of my Christie's are four out of five stars or five out of five stars. Very seldom do I have a three out of five. Um, I really did enjoy this one. We're calling this our number 12 Hercule Perot, not 13 like Goodreads. But I think that's because we include his short story collections. And I think we did not include maybe black coffee. I think that's where the discrepancy lies for us. 
I love reading the books, watching the TV adaptations or movies, if, if that's what they have, um, listening to the All About Agatha podcast, reading the Wikipedia articles, and then just, you know, doing a deep dive into each one of these. And this is one that had um, two TV adaptations, one with, I um, can't remember what his first name is, but Malkovich. Um, it's super, super dark, but way worth watching. Um, and then, of course, you have the regular one, the TV adaptation with David Suchet. I prefer that one just because it's lighter. Like, I know they're all about murder, but it's so much lighter. And I love David Suchet at this point. Um, and the Malkovich Perot is just a lot darker, sadder, somber doesn't come through with the humor like most of the Christie's do, but it is still super well done. Like I enjoy seeing how different people interpret um, Hercule Poirot, either in the in a TV movie or in, I'm sorry, in a movie or in a TV adaptation. I enjoy that. The Malkovich one also um, differs quite a bit from the book. So just be aware of that. I mean, always just read the book first to start with, and then you're, gonna, you're not going to be disappointed. Um, but I appreciate the adaptations, even if they are different and slide from the original. This one does come with a list of the cast of characters, you know, so when we're talking about, um, uh, you know, things that come into the book, this one does have a nice list of characters, which is super helpful. And it does move at a different pace than the regular Christie's, because you know if it's ABC Murders and you catch on with the A that there's going to be a B and a C. I don't know, it just, it seems to move a little differently. There are lots of the Agatha Christie hallmarks that we have come to look for. Things like uh, inheritance, drugs, um, and then they add in this lovely cat that's in the cafe, a ginger cat. That's really cool. Uh, it takes place in 1935 England, uh, and it was published as a modern day novel at that time. I listened to, I think, two different um, audios too. Like I read the book, but then I also listened to the other audios, and um, the one... And because they're narrated by Hastings, those are very comforting reads, very cozy reads. This one does switch, though, between first-person narration and third-person point of view, which is kind of odd. You, I think, are hearing from the murderer or someone that thinks they might be the murderer or that we think might be the murderer, so that part's a little weird. She does have great titles in this one, though, um, things that we have come to expect, like Perot makes a speech, the third letter, Description of a murderer, the scene of the crime. And it is marked in the beginning when you have the um, contents here, and then um, it tells you the chapter titles. It does notice when it is um, not from Captain Hastings' personal narrative, and at least you know it's coming because it is very different. Now, it is one of the things I've really come to love about Agatha Christie is that she doesn't have this like set rule, this set of rules that she follows and doesn't deviate from. It feels like we are 20, what did I say, 20, 25 books in, and she's still playing around. Like, she'll play around with who's telling the story. She will play around with um, how the murders take place. She plays around with who's telling the story. Um, her locations are very different. Sometimes there's that locked room or a closed circle, and then sometimes it's just not. So I really like that. I like that some of hers are more humorous than others. Some are darker than others. Um, she's still doing short stories. There's been a play in there. Like she's all over the place and I'm here for that. I love it. I'm really enjoying it. And you're always welcome to join us. It's on Facebook and I'm also uh, link it in the notes. It's the Agatha Christie Chronological Reading. Author study, I think it says even. I also want to give a short um, shout out to Natalie. She is a former student of mine. And I talked to someone the other day who said, hey, Natalie says hi. And by the way, she watches all your videos. So Natalie, if you're watching, hello for Mrs. Lovin and thanks for tuning in. This next book that I read is Michael Conley's, um, is it all the way down here? Dark Hours. Yep. All the way down here. Uh, a student donated this to the classroom. And because I've read Michael Conley before, I know I like him. Uh, and I've also watched Bosch and... Um, is it Bosch Legacy? I think it's what it's called. Um, since I've watched those shows, when she donated it, I'm like, I said, do you, you don't mind if I read it first, right? And she's like, yeah, I don't care. Um, so it is a pretty hefty one. Um, it is definitely a procedural crime novel, very much like the Michael Conley's um, that I've talked to you about before. And uh, very much like the TV show, it reads very much like the TV show. 
I think the first Michael Conley book that I read that I remember just really enjoying was Blood Work. And I know I've talked to you about um, that book here before that I've recommended it. I do highly recommend it. Here it is. Uh, so I have definitely talked to you about this book. I really enjoyed this. I think this is um, a great thriller, great detective story. I liked this. I didn't like it as much as this. And that might be because these characters I've already met by watching them in Bosch and Bosch Legacy. Um, there is a newer character in this one. This is the Renee Ballard and Harry Bosch novel. And really, Renee Ballard is the main character in this one. Um, so I wouldn't say, like, if you're watching the TV shows, like, you already know. Um, I don't remember seeing this case or ever meeting Renee Ballard in any of the shows that we've watched. Um, but this just stands out in my mind as just such a really, really good book. And I'm pretty sure I mentioned whenever I was talking about this book before, this is one of those books that then they did make a movie and I watched the movie and they change the killer. Who does that? They changed the killer. It's like they merged some characters together. It was bizarre. I don't recommend that. I recommend the book. I recommend the movie, but not related. I also have a couple more Michael Conley's that I just have not read. They're on my to be read list. A Darkness More Than Night, Echo Park, and The Lincoln Lawyer. I've also watched The Lincoln Lawyer. John and I watched The Lincoln Lawyer. Actually, I think Harbor watched it even with us. Maybe The Girlfriend, too. Pretty sure. Um, and I really enjoyed that series, too. So I think that would be a really good read. So all of those are on my to-be-read list. But let's get back to The Dark Hours. Um, now, this one's a little... Mm, you know, I'm not big on trigger warnings and that sort of thing, but there is a lot of assault in this one. Um, it's one of those, like, um, what is that nonfiction memoir? Um, after Dark, something after dark. And it was written by the author that died unexpectedly. Like, I don't know if the book was even published before she actually died, um, but it was about a serial killer um, and he would sneak into people's houses and uh, her work actually did help lead to the capture of him later. Um, I can't remember what is that called. I know I mentioned it to you before, Home After Dark or eh, something like that. But it's terrifying and it, it was hard for me to read. And this one got a little difficult for me to read too, just because it was a little too, this could happen and it's, it's terrifying. Um, so there is that. I'm going to throw that one out to you. Maybe that's why I didn't enjoy it quite as much as like a blood work. Um, type of novel. Uh, Conley does have 35 books in the Harry Bosch series, so that's quite a bit. This one is the number 23 in Harry Bosch series, number four in Rain, Renee Ballard, and number 35 in the Harry Bosch universe, according to Goodreads. But in this particular one, there are some serial killers, serial assault people, um, and Ballard and Bosch are on their trail. They're working together to take him down, although Harry is not technically on the force in this book. So Renee is actually on the force. She um, is trying to track this down. She's taking it very seriously. She doesn't want it to fall within the tracks. She's trying to help victims know that they are being heard and that this is important to them and that somebody's on the job. Um, but it does have a lot of that darkness that is in the whole Bosch series where um, you know, cops are, some cops are not doing their job. Some are very jaded. Some are just like, eh, I'm not going the extra mile. Um, but Renee Ballard does. It's also another one of those books. Pandemic, post-pandemic novels. Um, sometimes I don't mind it and sometimes it bothers me a bit. This one seemed to like start wading a bit into the bothering me some. Uh, just the masks, vaccine talk, um, uh, the social distancing, the way that it changed how people were able to do their jobs. It's just dark. It's not a, I'm not a, um, you know, pro or anti um, kind of pandemic mask vaccine person. But when I'm reading in literature and those things come up, I'm just automatically like, Ugh, like it was a terrible time. All these things caused such a rift between people. And I just am sometimes sad to see it creep into my fiction. Uh, Michael Conley is a journalist by trade, and you can tell in these kinds of books, uh, and I just really appreciated it. I gave this one a, thir a three out of five. Um, it took me a long time to get through, but admittedly, I was reading this one mostly at work. Um, whenever we would do our independent reading time, I would pull this out. Like I said, one of my students had given it to our classroom, so I wanted to read it there. It's going on the shelves there, so I would be able to talk about it. So 
Three out of five, Michael Conley, The Dark Hours. Highly recommend his book, Blood Work, and then I've got several others on my to be read list. Oh, the next book, I'm glad I'm talking about it because I need to get it back to one of my students again. I borrowed it. I listened to about half of this book and I feel like I talked to you about that. I'm glad my mom died, Jeanette McCurdy. Um, I listened to about half of it. The audio, super well done, read by the author. And then it just, I took too long. It returned it because I get all of my audios through Libby, through the public library. So it returned it. And then one of my students said, hey, didn't you tell me you read this book? I'm like, well, I was reading it. And she's like, oh, somebody gave it to me. Um, do you want to borrow it when I'm finished? Please. So I borrowed it from her and finished it. And I'm glad I did. It is a memoir. I gave it a three out of five. And again, um, when I give a book a three out of five, it usually means I appreciate it. I want to recommend it. Um, to people with some disclaimers. Um, I think her story, I think anybody's story is worth telling. So I don't care what your story is. If you're going to write a book about it, I will read it. Or if you want to write about it and give it to me, I will read it. I don't care what the story is. Everybody's story is worth listening to. And this is one of those stories that I feel like if someone had to endure this, the least I could do is read it and try and help process it. Um, and I think that is really what Jeanette McCurdy is trying to do here is she is trying to process the years and years of abuse and neglect um, that she suffered at the hands of her mother. I know it's a jarring title. I should have said that right up front. Every time I said I was reading this, people are like, I'm not going to read that book. Don't, don't read it if you don't want to. I totally understand it is a very in-your-face kind of title. Um, but when you are listening to um, how she processed, how her mother raised her, and um, just the treatment. I get it. I understand where she came, where she came across this. Um, and in the end, I think, unfortunately for me, it just really is a sad, sad story that um, she had no choice in the matter. Like it was, this is what you are going to do. She knew in order to be loved by her mother, she did have to go into show business and she had to be successful. It was not enough to be there. She had to be successful and there were a certain amount of things you were going to do to ensure that. And that was, you know, what you ate, what you look like, how you acted, who you talked to. Um, she just, her mother handed her over um, making sure that she would be successful no matter what the cost. And that cost was Jeanette's childhood. Um, I know that I'm in the minority with the three-star rating, and I get it. This book has won lots of awards, and you should think about that um, if you're considering reading it, because I think it is a very um, popular modern read. This is the kind of uh, memoir that a lot of people like to read. It also mentions other people that she was in movies and TV shows with, and I think there's some sort of um, draw towards books like that, too, where you're hearing those people's stories through someone else. Uh, but she's, I think she's very generous most of the time with the way that she talks about people and describes people. Um, obviously, maybe not so much her mom, but it, you know, if it is the truth, it is the truth. Uh, and again, I'm happy to read her story. I think it's a very important book. This is not a side that we often see. And it's also kind of a, um, um, you know, a cautionary tale about people who want to be famous no matter the cost. Well, the cost might be pretty costly. It does touch a little bit on like when someone is famous, how everyone around them expects them to take care of them. I think that's an interesting aspect to it. You can tell McCurdy has gone through tons and tons and tons and tons of uh, counseling and seeing, you know, seeking help. And she came a long way from that. Um, and a lot of that does come out in the way that she talks to you also, which I think is helpful. There's just a little bit too much of a cringe factor for me, I think. Like, some things she told me I just, I didn't need to know. I could have done without having to know that or read that. And I get it. Again, you can tell your story however you want to. It's just a little hard for me to recommend because of that cringe factor. Like, yes, one of my students was reading it, but I couldn't recommend this um, to any of my high schoolers, quite frankly. I don't think that there's enough to outweigh that cringe factor for me. But lots of people go through life trauma. This is a book about life trauma. And McCarty does go beyond just telling the story to here's how I process it. And now she has actually gotten past it. She is doing some directing. She's still in the Hollywood light. She's just not in the limelight. And I think that's also another um, interesting story for us to see is how some of these childhood actors have moved beyond that. So this one's a three out of five for me. 
with quite a bit of a cringe factor. This next one, I love, love, love. I highly recommend it. I don't have a copy of it. It is Lucy Scores, Things We Never Got Over. It's the Knock em Out series, number one. Um, I knew that my daughter-in-law, or my future daughter-in-law, uh, had a copy of it. So when we were going down there for spring break, I didn't take as many books as I normally would because I knew that I really wanted to borrow that one and read it. And um, I read it just within a couple of days. It was so good. I love this book. It was so fun. It was exactly what I needed. An escape from spring, or an escape from, you know, life and just uh, that spring break read. I read it just over a couple of days now. I will say when I saw this, it's a big book talk book. Um, I thought, oh, that is really, really heavy. It's going to take me a really long time. And so those, I have a hard time getting started um, just because I like to make it through a book within a couple of days, if not a week. And it, it was a really, really big one. But I still made it through in a couple of days because it is a do not, I do not want to put it down kind of book. So five stars for me. Five hundred and fifty seven pages. Oh, I've let a bee in the house. Sorry about that. Mm, yeah, that's gonna need to find its way out of here. Now I will say that it takes a good almost half of that book for things to get steamy. So if you are just looking for a steamy read, like a Colleen Hoover steamy kind of read, um, I think this is a read alike, but it takes a really long time to get to that. Now, once it steams up, it stays steamy. So good news there. But yeah, it takes a long time to get to that. If you like Penny Reed, Colleen Hoover, this is definitely a book for you. There is a bit of a more um, like thriller aspect. So um, maybe Verity, if that's what you're thinking, except for this one, I would say is more um, love and chasing down a love, the humor, the um, characters are a lot more lighthearted, um, whereas like Verity is more like Gone Girl. <laughs> um, this is thriller and romance, but it's um, it's just more lighthearted and just, I really, really like the characters. They're redeemable. They're really cool characters. I instantly liked the small town, again, that small community, getting to know all the characters. I like the twist that I didn't see coming, a found family. I'd say Penny Reed is probably the better um, of the two. I'm going to have to go try and get this bee out of my house. Now, I know what you're going to say. If we're talking about Penny Reed, Colleen Hoover, any of these other kinds of uh, romance thriller type people, uh, you know what's coming. It is predictable. Yes, it is. That's probably why we read it. There's a complicated romance. You know it's going to be love to hate kind of thing. It always is. But that is what we're drawn to. It is a trope for a reason. We like it. And yes, I am a little bit troubled by how bad behavior is so easily forgiven. I get it. This was my problem whenever we read um, It Ends With Us. But this is not an ends with us. There is some bad behavior going on. You uh, get to know the characters ahead of time, so you're supposed to be able to forgive them easily. Yes, it is a bit troubling. But still, it added to the storyline. And again, it made me not want to put it down. I really love this book, five out of five stars, Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score. And I was thrilled to find out that it was a series and this is number one in the Knock em Out series. So I will be continuing. Actually, I think in the book haul, I might have bought the second book in the series. I think I might have, we'll see. The next book I read, not a winner, Real Men Knit. It is by Quana Jackson. Look at that cover though. I picked it up, I think, at Goodwill because of the cover, because I'm like, men knit, that's awesome. That looks like fun. Look at those pretty colors. It's a great paperback size. Um, it's published by Jove, J-O-V-E. But sadly, this is not a winner for me. Oh, I gave it two stars. I don't do that very often. Um, but I think maybe that was because like I read it. Yes, I did not DNF it. I rarely DNF a book. Um, but I got, I found myself just skimming and wanting to get through it. I was just done. Like it just took way too long. Um, and I know I just said, like, I know it's a trope and we're all here for that. And we are, but sometimes the trope works. And then sometimes it's just frustrating. This one was frustrating. This was move on. I saw the train wreck coming and I just, I didn't like it. I didn't fall in love with the characters. I didn't fall in love with the community. I fell in love with the story. I think the storyline is really cool. The storyline is, um, oh, what's her name? 
there's um mama joy mama joy owns a knitting shop she adopts boys i want to say there's like three of them there's a girl that's working there carrie uh and mama joy passes away when she passes away they've got to figure out what to do with the store um some of the boys are successful some not so much um some want to just sell the store and move on it's in harlem i believe i feel like that's right yes um and i think it's called um strong knits that's you know run by a woman um, the community loves to go there, chat, take um, classes, sit around, knit, that sort of thing. Um, so Carrie really wants it to continue, uh, but she can't really do that without the son's help or support because it is their mother's shop. Um, and so it's them trying to work through that. So I love the storyline. I think it's got a great storyline. It didn't hook me. Now, some of that might be because it came on the heels of what's it called? Things We Left Behind. Um, the Lucy score book. And I loved it so much that when I read this, I was like, yeah, I could do without it. Uh, so two out of five, not spending too much time on that one, but there it is. The next book I also do not have a copy of. It is HP Lovecraft's The Call of Cthulhu, I think is how it, it goes. Um, I don't have a copy of it because this is another one that I borrowed from a student. He uh, read it for his independent reading time and then asked me if I wanted to borrow it, and I did. It's a beautifully illustrated H.P. Lovecraft book. So when I think of H.P. Lovecraft, I think of like these kind of paperback H.P. Lovecrafts that I have. And just so you see the other side of that, this is so cool. Like they look like this on the back. Um, I think of these kinds of paperbacks. But uh, this was not. This was like a book like this big, and it was illustrated. It was beautifully illustrated, and it basically just had that one story in it, The Call of Kaluthu, I think is how you say it. Now, that book is covered in this book, The uh, Blood Curdling Tales of Horror and the Macrobe. It's about maybe a 25, about 25 page story. Um, so I started it in this. I need to continue reading the rest of these. That's on my um, seasonal reading for Halloween, you know, fallish reads. All of H.P. Lovecraft's are. Um, so I will put those back in there. It looks like we have The Tomb, The Case of Charles, Dexter Ward, The Lurking Fear, The Doom That Came to Sarnath, and The Lurker at the Threshold. Uh, I've also read another H.P. Lovecraft but I don't seem to have that marked, so I have to look up what I, I mean, it was a couple of his short stories. We read them with our classics, mm, classics club? No. I read it with our um, humanities club at school. We had one year. We had one student that was highly motivated to read humanities, um, and he chose a couple of the short stories for H.P. Lovecraft. So I have read H.P. Lovecraft before, um, but this was just a different one. Now, he is not for everybody. I'm just going to tell you that. He is bizarre. It is horror. Um, he's weird. <laughs> there is that. But the illustrations really made it worth it in this one. I wish I could show you. Uh, it opens up with a beautiful quote by um, Algernon Blackwood. And then it's broken up into parts. There's the horror in clay, the tale of Inspector Lagrasse, the madness from the sea. So each of those parts makes it easy to get through. It has little pieces of graphics in there, like a newspaper article, and you have to read the newspaper article to make, make the story move on. There's talk of sanity, cults, slipping into strange stories. Uh, there's an introduction that talks about the H.P. Lovecraft kind of genre. Um, that is written by John Howe. He talks about fantastical literature, supernatural horror, aliens, and how Lovecraft pulls all that together to make a crafted story. Uh, in this particular one, a guy finds something that belonged to his uncle. He's an heir to his uncle, and he's trying to make sense of it, and that's what takes him on this journey to figure out what the Call of Kalutha is. It is immersive, but it is super confusing, especially to those of us that this isn't exactly our genre, but I was happy to read it uh, so that I could talk about it with my student. The next book I read is the 28th book that I've read this year, and it is another Agatha Christie. We are going to go back to this one that I was trying to talk to you about at the beginning and talking about the wrong book, The Postmark Murder. This one has um, four stories of Agatha Christie's in it, A Caribbean Mystery, Nemesis, Murder in Mesopotamia, and Appointment with Death. Now, I will say I'm irritated. I don't know why this collection has those four stories in that particular order. 
They are not in chronological order. So why do that? I don't know. But Murder in Mesopotamia moved up to the top of my Agatha Christie list. I loved it. I know when we did our um, Agatha Christie group and we talked about it and I said, I love it. I'm moving it to the top. They're like, really? Didn't you find her irritating? The um, person who is narrating it, again, it is not a Hastings on this one. Uh, Hercule Perot doesn't come in until uh, a quarter, maybe even half of the book. Uh, there are all these weird things. It's not your usual Agatha Christie. It takes place in Mesopotamia. But for some reason, I just found it incredibly interesting. And then again, the adaptations were great. There's a great conversation on All About Agatha about it. And yes, the other argument that my group said is really that unbelievable ending. And you're going to move that to the top of your list. Yes, it's a little unbelievable in the end, but I don't know the, the way Agatha weaves this whole story together and you get all the archaeology um, kind of conversation going on in the background. I just thought was super cool. And this is another one that has a radio performance out there by the BBC, and that is really cool. So again, I read it. I listened to the radio production. Then I listened to the audio, listened to the All About Agatha podcast, watched the adaptations, this is one that we had several weeks between our Agatha discussion, so I had plenty of time to do all that. And a lot of times when I am, you know, listening to an audio or listening to the radio production um, after I've read the book, I just catch so many cool little things that I'm like, hmm, it's odd that they put it in there like that, or they might change a little bit, or um, the way someone acts something out, just it's awesome. I really, really like the different portrayals of the characters and all the adaptations. Um, Perot does say that murder is a habit and in this one there's a title that's actually um, titled murder is a habit and he said that before it is a closed circle mystery and I think those are always super cool to see how she's going to craft that and try and lead you in the right direction so that the reader has the opportunity to guess who the murderer is before she gets to it it has a lot of the um, Christy trademarks poison masking Way too many characters that you can't keep, you know, apart. There's several young guys that kind of all blend together. Uh, marriage, alibis, um, and affairs. So if you like Agatha Christie and you haven't read Murder in Mesopotamia, pick it up. It is lovely. Five out of five stars for me. The next one I'm going to talk to you about, I read this for a class. I um, am a teacher, therefore we are always doing continuing education um, I am trying to get to the next little section in our pay scale where it's master's plus. We did have a master's plus 15. Now we have a master's plus 30 and I am just a few from that. Um, so I signed up to take this course online. It's the writing revolution. Um, and so this is an educational book. I'm not going to talk very much about it, but if you are a teacher, it is a way, um, for, uh, you to teach writing to your students and you can do it across the board like I had elementary teachers, intermediate teachers, middle school teachers, and high school teachers in this class with me. Um, it is by Judith Hockman um, and I use several of the activities in my classes to um, with great success. Like we literally are using one right now with our final essays and it seems to just take some of the um, guesswork out of writing essays for kids that are still super nervous about how do I plan this out? How do I do it? Really enjoyed it. Um, I don't know that I gave this, I probably gave it five out of five stars because like I said, it really worked for me and I will be incorporating more of it next year into my classes. That's book number 29. Book number 30 is this treasure. Um, I picked it up at the book rack of Murray. I actually did pay 450 for this one, even though it's a little, you know, paperback, but I did because, um, I'll have to see if I can get you a better picture of this, but look at that spine. I saw that and I'm like, what is that? That's cool. And it looks very much like the front of the book. Um, but it is called Heather and Homicide. It's by Molly McRae, a High the Highland Bookshop Mystery Series. I knew I was probably getting into the middle of a mystery on this one, but I'm okay with that. Um, according to book, book according to Goodreads, this is book four in that series. I really enjoyed it. I always go into um, a used bookstore, even Goodwill, with a, a book list, knowing what it is that I'm looking for or books that are on my radar that I want to either get for my classroom or get for here, uh, books that our book club is reading, that sort of thing. But I always come out with something that wasn't on my list, and that was the case with this Heather and Homicide. 
In this case, judging a book by its cover worked out for me. I will go back and read the first three in this series. Uh, the main character is Janet Marsh, and she has moved from the States to Scotland. Apparently, in the first three books, Janet has found other dead bodies, and in this one, also happens. She is running a bookstore, the Yon Bonnie Books, with her daughter and some friends who are also running, I think it's a bed and breakfast or a tea shop next door. Um, apparently, she's been very involved in finding dead bodies before. She seems to have a uh, talent for ferreting out the truth. Um, and there are just so many lovely parts to this little cozy. This was just a good example of what you want in a cozy. You want, and this, again, I read on spring break, but you want a book that's, if you're looking for a cozy, you want a book that you want to sit down with at the end of the day or in the morning hours or, you know, after a long day at work and you want to get lost in it for a while. That is this kind of book. Scotland, bookshop, murder, mayhem. Um, it's just super, super fun. Four out of five on this one, just because it's a cozy, um, but I, I loved it. There's also some talk about miniature books in this one, too. There's like, um, you know, like when she runs the bookshop, she talks about some of the books that are there and like local authors and visiting authors that are coming in. And then there's also like a little miniature book that is at the heart of um, one of the murders that takes place here. That is Heather and Homicide by Molly McRae. The next book I read, do I not have a copy? I do not have a copy of, but it is one of the Cleo Coyle books. I've talked to you about this series before. It is the Coffee House Mystery Series. This is um, one that I need to read, Dead to the Last Drop. I haven't read it yet, so I'll let you look at that cover, but that is not the book that I read in the series. The book that I read in the series was... Once Upon a Grind. I also have this one that I picked up not too long ago that I'm planning to read this fall, The Ghost and the Haunted Portrait, A Haunted Bookshop Mystery, so that's on my to-be-read list. But the one I read this time, or listened to actually, was Once Upon a Grind. It was number 14 in the Coffee House Mystery Series. I gave this a three out of five. I, don't, I think I reviewed one of these last month, if I'm not mistaken, in my videos with you. And the kicker is, I love the series. I really do. But it's starting to slow down for me. And I'm listening to it, and it's just, it's too long. Um, there's 448 pages in the, the actual book on this one. I listen to it, and I think that maybe I'm getting a little tired of the narrator, too. No offense. Um, but I just think I'm just getting a little bit tired of the story. This one picked up, though. The last one I did, I remember the title of it, number 13. This is number 14. This one did pick up a little bit for me. Um, I didn't find it quite as slow. I enjoyed the fairy tale theme of uh, Once Upon a Grind. But not so much that she's drinking these magic bean coffees um, and having hallucinations. There's that, there's a weird vibe going on. Um, I just, it's okay, but it's just far-fetched, these Jack and the Beanstalk beans. Um, I know all of the books and I'm really going to say this is the most far fetched, <laughs> but I don't know. Sometimes I get into it and sometimes I don't. I liked the club aspect. I thought that that was interesting. I found it believable that there could be the secret club going on. Claire and her boyfriend's relationship is still, um, it took a better turn in this particular book, but it's still a little frustrating for me where they're at right now is they're separated and I want something to happen. But now the, the end of the book does talk about what might be next. So there's that. It's probably a little more on edge. This ending is probably a little more on edge than usual. I am beginning to wonder though, if Cleo uh, Coyle, uh, the team of Alfonsi and Serranacini, I think is the, I think it's a husband and wife. And then they just go by Cleo Coyle is their um, pen name. Um, I don't know if they're doing that. Like is one writing more than the other? And that's why sometimes my books are like, their books are like that for me. I, I don't know. Or how much are they a team and how much do they take turns writing? I think that would be interesting. So I probably need to do a little bit of a deep dive more into that series and that author, those authors. But this was okay for me. I'd give it a three out of five. And then number two is Black Cake. It is by Charmaine Wilkerson. This is our last book club read. Uh, it's a great book club read, so I will throw that out there. I know it's been super popular. Um, we read it for my book club, the, the staff, and, staff and Friends book club that I've told you about. It's been going on for 25 more years. I can't, I don't even know how many years we are at now. 
Um, I found it very much in the vein of like where the crawl dad sing because there's definitely a suspense going on. Um, a mother has passed on. Her two children have to come back to town to settle the estate. She has left a living will, like a, um, not a living will, what do you call that? A uh, live video, like where she is telling them um, like how she wants some things dealt with and then also revealing some family secrets. Um, and that is terrifying that someone would do that after their death to leave for two children to muddle through. Um, but they are processing that and it's difficult for them. Um, their mother is not who they thought she was and she never let them know that while she was alive, which I think is sad. Um, but it's definitely a family saga. I think Jenna Bush, her book club did that. Um, and maybe is that Good Morning America too? I don't know that book club real well, but I know it was one of her picks. Um, the black cake alternates narratives throughout. So it's being told from the sister's point of view, from the brother's point of view, and then from the mother's point of view when she's telling you about the video. Um, it has a lot of culture and history mixed in there. And it was a great discussion for our book club. I'm going to guess I probably gave it a three out of five. I don't see it on here. I did three out of five. Uh, it's not my favorite read, but I thought it was a really good discussion book. And a quick read. It was very fast to read. And then the last one, I don't yet have a good reads review out there for you, but I will because I just finished it last night. And it is Kate Carlisle's Dress to Drill. One of the things I really love about her books are those covers. Isn't that phenomenal? This is, mm, I don't know what number because I don't have it reviewed out there for you. But it's part of the Fixer Up Mystery series. One, two, three, four. Maybe number 10 in the um, Fixer Upper Mystery series. I started reading Car I started reading Kate Carlisle because of her bibliophile mystery series. And there's probably 20 or 25 in that series. I started with those. And then when she put these out, and actually, I feel like I might have even watched it on Hallmark Movies and Mysteries, the um, the this series, the Fixer Upper Mystery series, before I actually read one of the books. I'm not sure about that. But um, either way, Kate Carlisle is one of those cozy mystery um, authors that I started reading and then decided, hey, I'm going all the way back to the front and reading these in order because I love them. I've read all of the Bibliophile Mystery Series and all of the Fixer Up Mystery Series. Um, she's got a few odd outliers out there that I still need to um, track down and read, but she is definitely one of those authors that I want to talk to you about just her and just her series this summer. Um, so putting that on the to-do list. But this dress to drill is it was really really good. I really enjoyed it. Um, I read it in a matter of days. It was one of those that I kept sneaking off trying to find some time, like between grading papers because it's that time of year, and uh, trying to get the outside of the house cleaned up and stuff, and you know working with my husband and being like, "I'll be back in a minute," and then running upstairs and reading a little bit before I came back outside. It's that kind of book because I really wanted to get to um, the end. Um, and it's a fun mystery series. It is very cozy. And her series, I think, are also interesting because the uh, main character, the sleuth, the amateur sleuth, um, their main job is so interesting. So you've got the biblio mystery bibliophile mystery series. And that main character restores old books. So you always get some kind of history behind whatever book that current one is talking about. And in this one, Shannon always has a job where she is restoring like old Victorian houses. And when she's restoring those houses, she always comes upon a dead body. So just know, if you hire her, there's going to be a dead body in your basement. That's just what's going to happen. Um, but it doesn't matter. It just seems like every time I read these, I know it's coming and I love it. But I especially love the stories that surround um, both of these main characters and their particular jobs. This one especially, I thought, um, just really dealt, really got into dealing with um, what I see happen quite a bit where someone buys an old church and then is refurbishing it as something else, a house, a coffee shop, um, a bookstore. In this particular one, I think it's going to be an art, I think it was going to be an art gallery, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then just telling you like, what is that process? What do you need to do to take an old decrepit building and make it, you know, able to, make it something that people can repurpose into something and be safe and beautiful and appreciate that that beauty. It's one of the things about America that I feel like we don't do a great job of. We're very disposable, um, especially with our houses and our buildings. We just knock them down and build new instead of appreciating something that's been there. 
And I love that about um, um, Shannon Hammer in this particular series. So love it. Four out of five. Um, and I will update you on the series and that author this summer in a separate video. All right. That's all the ones I've read so far um, since the last time I talked to you. So we are updated there. Let me move those and get the next set up here. All right. So those are all the books that I uh, have read since the last time I talked to you. So now let's do some revisits and corrections. So in episode 32, I showed you that I had book hauled this. It's called Jim Candy by Carl, let's say Decker, I think is how you maybe say his name. Um, it is a paperback copy and it is one that I've already read, but I wanted to um, have a copy of it here so that I could loan it out. <clears throat> I did have a Goodreads review out there for you, but I think maybe I probably didn't talk to you about it because I didn't have the Goodreads printed before. Um, but it is a young adult novel. Um, it's definitely a guy book. There's just that. Sometimes, like when I'm talking about Meg Cabot, I'm talking to you girls. When I'm talking about Jim Candy, I'm talking to you guys. It's one that got circulated in my high school library quite a bit. And I was like, finally, I'm just going to take it home one weekend and read it and slug through it. And I didn't. I loved it. I didn't have to slug through it. It was a great read. Uh, Mick Johnson is the main character. And he is a high school athlete. Let me pull my chair up here a little bit. He's a high school athlete. And he is being faced with some common um, struggles in high school. He has a lot of pressure from his dad and his teammates to perform. His coach, he has a gym trainer. His gym trainer gives him some options, um, and he has to decide if he wants to pursue those options. I think it really helps um, have that conversation where everybody thinks, I can start it, and then if I don't want to continue doing this, then I can just stop at any time that I want to. I don't have to continue doing it, and no harm done. And it starts that conversation where that's what Mick thought, and it didn't actually turn out that way. He definitely has to suffer some consequences um, and decide, is this new person the person he wants to be, or... Does he want to go back to being the Mick that maybe not everybody's so um, excited about, but it's him one way or the other. So super good read, highly recommended, especially for my high school boys. Middle school even, I don't remember there being a lot of language or anything in there. It got really good um, reviews from lots of the online sources like School Library Journal and Booklist. Um, I just, I don't remember there being a lot of language, but there might, there might be some. So just wanted to update you on that one. And then I uh, talked to you about picking up this book, I think like episode 20, maybe. Um, I talked to you about this and I did not have a Goodreads out there. And this is one of my all-time favorite books, like in my top five for sure. Daisy Fan and the Miracle Man by Fanny Flagg. So I did add a Goodreads review for this one. Read this book, folks. Summer book. You need a summer book list? Get this on it. It's fun. It is laugh out loud. I remember reading it in the car with my sister on the way to Florida back, I think when she was moving to Florida, if I'm not mistaken. And um, I just was howling with laughter. And she was like, what are you reading? So then she read it after that. And same thing. Loved it. Usually if you ask me what my all-time favorite book is, and I've read like 2,500 I either say Daisy Faye and the Miracle Man or Their Eyes Were Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston. Those are two of my all-time favorites. Barbara King Solver, like it's really hard to choose, but um, those are in my top, my top five. Definitely my top five. It's just so funny and you just fall into the story of Daisy Faye and her dad. Her dad always has her trying to um, make money on these money schemes half the time that puts her in danger, but it's not... Um, it's not a scary kind of danger book where you're worried really about her. You're a little worried because he puts her in some, some crazy places, but um, it's mostly entertaining. There's a malt slash bait shop that um, her family is going to move. To, I think it's Alabama, um, the Gulf Shores, and they're going to run this um, bait shop. You know, this is their next way to make big money. And of course, it, things do not go as planned. Now, Daisy, Daisy, or not Daisy, Fanny Flagg is better known for fried green tomatoes, probably more because there was a movie made out of it. And that is also a great, I don't know if I ever read it, but that's a great movie and it's a great book by her. I've read several others by her and I need to get reviews out there for the other Fanny Flagg books that I've read. But I did just add the Goodreads review on this one. The next one I want to update you on is All I Really Needed to Know I Learned in Kindergarten. I talked to you about this book in episodes 32 and 33. But once again, I did not have a Goodreads review out there, so I added it. 
This book I've used the last three years that I've been back in the high school classroom. I teach high school freshmen and seniors. This year I had a sophomore and a junior too, several sophomores and a junior, um, but mainly freshmen. And I love using the title um, essay in this book of essays, All I Ever Needed to Know I Learned in Kindergarten, to have a good conversation about manners and um, just being a good human being. We always have a really good discussion. We talk about like what are some of the things that like you think are good manners and what should we all be doing? What would you add to the list? So it's just a really good assignment. And I love all of Robert Fulgham's um, books. I've read several of them. It was on fire when you lay down on it. But um, I don't think I had a copy of this, and maybe that's why I didn't um, put a review out there for it. So I did pick up a, um, a copy of this, and I feel like since then I even found another copy to put in the classroom, if I'm not mistaken. But I added that review for you on Goodreads, and I highly recommend it. You know, I'm, I love essays. I love short stories. And um, this is one you need to pick up if you ever see it in a thrift store or get it from your library and read it over the summer. Just read like an essay a night or something. It's so, so good. They're funny, they're heartwarming, they're inspiring, great book. Robert Fulgham, any of his, um, they're just a joy to read. I also listened to a book of his short stories called True Love. Um, I wanted to mention, I know I've talked to you um, about Into the Wild by John Krakauer. I also talked to you about his Into Thin Air and Under the Banner of Heaven. I've not read this one. I read Into Thin Air, and I'm pretty sure I've talked to you about that one. But um, I wanted to touch base with you again on Into the Wild. I've talked to you about it. I had Goodreads um, reviews out there. But I listened to a podcast, and I think I mentioned it in one of my um, videos not too long ago. And the podcast is called You're Wrong About. And it was a conversation about... Um, the main character, Chris McCandless, there's a conversation about a deep dive into that background of um, what we know after the book came out, after the movie came out, um, a little bit more about the family, a little bit more about the trouble, and it was so, so good. So the podcast is called um, You're Wrong About, and it, it just, it's fabulous. I highly recommend that you go find it, you uh, listen to that particular conversation, especially if you've already read the book, but if you haven't read the book, read the book. If you haven't watched the movie, watch the movie. It's beautiful scenery. Um, and just Krakauer is definitely one of those nonfiction um, authors that I love to read. The uh, podcast is Blair Braverman, if you need that. Um, I think I mentioned to you maybe in the last one that um, the boy, I have to say it right, the boy, the mole, the fox, and the horse by Charlie Mackesy, um, that they made a short video. It, it won um, an Oscar for Best Short this last time around, this last season. And I've talked to you about this book several times. The review I have out is from June 8th of 2021. But I told you that I, I think in the last video that I was talking to you, I told you I was going to try and do First Chapter Friday and read this to my classes. But um, admittedly, this year's freshman class has been different. Um, and they don't do so well with me reading to them. Like the last two years, the kids loved it. Like they looked forward to it. They would walk in and be like, ah, first chapter Friday, what are you reading to us today? Um, and then this class just not as respectful when I'm reading, not as attentive, just doesn't seem to appreciate it. So then I just didn't do it. Like it's not fun if you don't appreciate it and you're not getting anything out of it. That's not my plan. Um, so I told them that I really wanted to read this book to them. But, um, you know, I had been struggling with First Chapter Friday with them. And if they weren't going to be respectful, like, I'm not going to spend my time doing it. And uh, I started reading the book. And I think I told you I was going to update you. And I just have to say, they were super respectful. They seemed to really appreciate the story. I love this story because I think it has a lot of just affirmations and encouraging you to uh, be a good community member, be a good human being, support others. Um, understand that a lot of us are going through the same thing. A lot of us feel those feelings of hopelessness or loneliness or um, not, you know, not having a meaningful life from time to time. And this book deals with those sorts of things. Um, and it's beautiful. It's illustrated. You could look it up. Like if you, um, whoops, if you look up under images, a lot of his images are online so that you can see them too. But just wanted to give you that update that they did great. I'm so glad I read it to them. It's a book I want to share with anyone who will listen to me read it to them or just pick it up and read it yourself. I love it, and it went really well for First Chapter Friday.
I had picked up a copy of A Short Guide to a Happy Life by Anna Quinlan. Um, and I do have a Goodreads review out there from 2019. So just wanted to remind you, I picked up an extra copy because I had one here and I wanted one for my classroom, picked it up, you know, like Goodwill or something. And this is another just short inspirational read that I'll be happy to put in there and then let my kids know like, hey, on a day when you forgot to bring in your independent reading book, this is one you can easily get through today or tomorrow, you know, in your 10 minutes of reading. Um, and it's just like a short pep talk from Anna Quinlan, another one of my very favorite authors. Um, on the fact that, you know, you can lead a happy life. It seemed like, like the last book I talked to you about was talking about that because I think there are universal feelings that we definitely are up and down in how we feel um, meaningful to other people and then like nobody cares. And then like our life has purpose and then our life does not have purpose. And I'm in the right place and I'm not in the right place. I can't imagine that so many of you don't feel that same um, roller coaster ride of emotions. And these kinds of books sometimes are ones I just like to pick up not sure what that was. I just like to pick up and um, remind myself that we all have those feelings and that it's going to be okay. So uh, that Goodreads review is out there. Um, and then I also had picked up a copy of The Happiness Project, but I already had a copy. So that's one that I will probably put in my free little library if my husband gets it installed this summer. Um, this will be one that I can put in there or I can share it with a friend. Um, but I did already read this and... I have a review. Oh, I added one. Um, I, there's a bee or something flying around here. Just ignore that. Um, February 27, 2023, I added that review. I honestly don't remember much of the book. So what I would like to do is next year, because it does start in January. Next year in January, I would like to review each time that um, the month comes around and see if there are things that I need to, um, like, start instilling more in my own life because I don't remember a lot of this book and I know that I read it. Um, so throwing that one out there and then also I have that extra copy for the free little library or someone, if you would like it, let me know. Um, and then the last update that I have for you is The Four Agreements. This is another book that I use in my classrooms quite a bit. Um, and I just happened to pick up another um, copy of that. And I added a review March 28th of 2023 for Goodreads on that. This is fabulous. Go get this book like right now, right now. Just go buy it. <laughs> um, I'm going to pick it up every time I see it in thrift because the four agreements are be impeccable with your word. Don't take anything personally. Don't make assumptions and always do your best. Uh, and it's one that I don't read the whole book to my classroom, but we have a discussion about those four agreements and how they could be life changing for you. And I touch on it from time to time. I just think they're super good. I ask my kids like, which one, which one of these do you most identify with? Do you have a story about one of those? Uh, can you provide evidence of how that's something that you do in your own life? So added the good reads for that one. And then again, I will be putting one of those in my classroom. So that's it for our revisits and corrections. And for our recent reads, so next is book haul. Give me a minute. All right, next section, book haul. Um, I always say I'm not going to have a big book haul, and then I always do. It's the thrifting. Um, I hit a couple of independent bookstores this time. We went to a coffee shop, and they were selling a, big, a book about Bigfoot. How do I not buy that by a local author? Come on. Um, so I have another big book haul, and I'm not sorry. I will say when I'm doing the book haul, usually I'll give you a little bit about it, but then I wait until after I do the book haul video before I look to see if I've got it on Goodreads um, or if I've talked to you about it, and then I'll update you on that the next time under the revisits and corrections. So I won't go into a ton of detail unless I already have the um, Goodreads printed for you, which I don't think I do on most of these yet. Um, so we'll get there. So let's start off. I remember I am an equal opportunity book hauler. I book haul mostly thrift. Um, sometimes it might be a garage sale or somebody gave it to me or an exchange from the free little library. Or every once in a while I go to an actual bookstore, try to be independent, um, and I purchase the book there. So it just depends. So our first visit is a Goodwill. I don't remember which one, but I ran in somewhere and picked up a couple. And I have The One and Only Ivan by Katherine Applegate. This is a Newbery Award winner. I've read it and I'm pretty sure I have a copy of this. So this one will probably be for my classroom. And honestly, I think I even already have a copy of this in my classroom, but um, I probably only have one copy. So happy to pick up another copy of that. I picked up a copy of this, The Case for God by Karen Armstrong. I don't know if I've read Karen Armstrong or not, but I wanted to. 
Um, so picked up that, Goodwill again, cheap one. And then Beard on Bread, and it is James Beard. I don't know how much you're gonna be able to pick up in the video, but look, I can't, I can't tell if you can see how great that illustration is. But it is a beautiful old book, and um, I'm gonna show you. If you take off the paper cover, which is disintegrating, it is also beautiful on the actual book. How great is that? And uh, it says Beard on Bread, James Bird. Uh, sorry, James Beard looks like this. And then I have that great dust jacket that is the paper dust jacket. How great is that? And then in addition to that, all of these little found items in the book. So we have zucchini bread. It's Mr. Dunville's recipe. Thank you, Mr. Dunville. We'll try that with our zucchini this summer. We have a recipe from Quick Breads are long on satisfaction, banana bread, honey raisin loaf bread, raspberry bread, and blueberry orange bread. Now, I don't see a date on this particular magazine. Let's see. This coupon expired in 1991, though. So we have that that we will put back in there. We have buttermilk biscuit recipe that looks like it was cut off of a flour bag. And then one more. This says, these were all grandmother's recipes. One is in her handwriting, the other two she had clipped out of the paper. I don't know if this is what she used or not, but it's all I have. It's for yeast rolls, yeast rolls, and bread recipe, Betty Steele. It says, is this a 12 or a two for cups? And seven cups of flour, I don't know. This is exactly how it looks on the recipe card though. <laughs> and then the recipe card's also on the back. So I don't know, somebody left it in there. I will try them. <laughs> um, I've been thinking I would like to make some bread this summer. So putting that on my summer to-do list, bake bread. Currently, I am picking up my bread at the Kroger Bakery or um, Jungle Gyms, depending on which one we run into that week. And um, they always have like smaller loaves of interesting bread like the one I have now is a cranberry walnut and it is so delicious. Um, so I don't have time to do it right now. I'm so glad that Kroger does it for me and I love them. I also got these little pats of butter at Kroger. They're like, um, one was a uh, red pe crushed red pepper um, infused butter. One's a gorgonzola and I think the other one was a garlic, honey garlic or something maybe. They came in like in little pats and there was like six of them. So just saying, I have no idea what section they were in, but when I saw them, I'm like, I'm never gonna see that again. I'm gonna pick it up right now. Uh, so happy to pick up that James Beard on bread. I just talked to you about Fanny Flag and I forgot these were in the hall. I have already read the All Girl Filling Station. It's last reunion. Uh, so I will check to see if I have um, a Goodreads review out there for that one. And if not, I'll add one. And then putting this on my to be read, I still dream about you. I have not read that. Picked up this one. It is Max Best Friend, Hero and Marine. Uh, the Story of a Canine Hero. And it also is a book. I mean, I'm sorry, a movie. Did I read this? I don't think I've read it might have seen the movie. Not sure. I'll check in on that. And then that takes us to my birthday was April 9th and my sister gave me this book. It is called The Irresistible Blueberry Bake Shop and Cafe by Mary Symes's. Symes's. Um, and it does have a reader's pick guide inside and there's a little blurb on the front from James Patterson. So that's interesting. Um, it has a little sticker on the back. She bought it when she was on vacation at Wall Drug, if you've ever been to Wall Drug. And it also has a beautiful bookmark in there um, that I think she said they picked up there too. Pretty sure that's what she said. Uh, but either way, that's on my summer reading list. I'm happy to get moving on that. Um, this next section, ah, our public library had their um, book sale. Um, you know how most, pu most libraries have, most public libraries, have a book sale. I feel like it's always this time of year for our book, um, for our public library, but um, I always pop in and get some good ones there. And I got this, Fast Food Nation, which I've already read. So again, I'll look to see if I have a Goodreads review. If I don't, I'll add one. Um, but I also don't think I have a copy of that already here. Hmm, looking on my nonfiction shelf, I don't see it. Um, so happy to add that to my shelves. Pretty sure I do have a copy of this already. 
the life-changing magic of tidying up. Looks like I have a Goodreads review out there from 2019. So might need to update you on that one. Uh, but I'm sure you've all heard of that, the, you know, Marie Kondo. And if you're book people and you read this, you probably already know that she tells you like not to keep all your books. She's wrong. I'm keep I'm keeping all of mine. Um, or I am passing them on to someone um, that I know will enjoy them. I'm not just going to get down to my like five favorite books. It's not going to happen. But I feel like I might already have a copy of that too, but it was super cheap. I do. I see that I have a copy of that. So I'll probably put that in a free little library once it gets up and running this summer. And then I know I already have a copy of this. I also have a copy. I think that was Stella in her bone. Um, I think I also have a copy at school, but this is definitely another one that I would put another copy at school in my classroom or pass it on to a friend. This is a super good um, nonfiction memoir-ish read with a great story about that author. If you don't know Laura Hildebrandt, um, you know, again, you could find great videos on YouTube on this one, but I'll look to make sure that I have reviewed that for you before putting it out there. I'm pretty sure I already have a copy of this book, but I still haven't read it. It's Nora Ephron's I Feel Bad About My Neck. Um, but again, I just had to pick it up because it was dirt cheap. Um, and I keep wanting to read this book because Nora Ephron, I've heard so much about. I know that she is a big player in um, You've Got Mail, <coughs> which is my all-time favorite movie. Um, so uh, another good one that I should take with me. Maybe if I think if I have two copies, maybe I'll take this with me when I go to visit my cousin in Florida um, in June and then just switch it out at a um, free public library to see if she wants it or wants to read it. So maybe we'll do that because I do feel like I have another copy of that one. I also picked up a copy of Meg Cabot's All American Girl, but I already took it to school because I was book talking Meg Cabot and I don't have a lot of Meg Cabot's at school. And I picked up um, a copy of this book that is about mnemonic devices, which I talk to my kids about every year. Um, <coughs> excuse me. The uh, book is called Every Good Boy Deserves Fudge, the book of mnemonic devices, but pretty sure I already took that to school too. I picked up the copy of this, and again, probably just to put it in the classroom, it's Jody Lynn Anderson. Book three, Maybird, Warrior Princess, because I know I have some kids that really are drawn to those kinds of covers. So I'm going to put that one in the classroom. The Confidence Code for Girls. Thought it would be a good one for them to flip through. Um, this one, I will definitely read this before I throw it into the classroom, but it's called Cursed. Um, and it's illustrated by Frank Miller, which I think would be super interesting. And it says soon to be a Netflix series. Probably already is, and I don't know about it. But I'll check that out this summer and see what's there. It is super, super heavy, um, but the illustrations just really drew me to it. I'm like, this is super interesting. I want to know what that's all about. Um, so I'm going to look a little bit more into that. This was in a free little library, and I, uh, you know, exchanged a couple of books for it here at Fayetteville at the Fayetteville um, Police Station. They have one. I don't know what's going on with my voice. My kids have been sick all week. This is probably why, like my school kids, I don't have kids at the house. Uh, but my kids come in and they're like, oh, I feel awful. I'm like, please get away from me. <laughs> please stop touching everything. But this is called The Girlfriend. Sarah McNaughton picked it up in the free little library. And I thought it might look like one that um, my future daughter-in-law might like. The Girl from Widow Hills by Megan Miranda. When I was down at my son's and uh, future daughter-in-law's for spring break, uh, she said, here's your book back. And I'm like, is that my book? She's like, yeah, I remember last time you we were down here, you bought, you bought it. I read it. Here it is. So I really want to read more Megan Miranda. My friend Jenny Hostetler gave me this book for my birthday. It's called Holy Moments. Um, and it's a little devotional book. So looking forward to reading that this summer on my porch. Looks super good. It says, Holy Moments, a handbook for the rest of your life by Matthew Kelly. This is that Bigfoot book that I picked up in Hocking Hills at the Hocking Hills Coffee Emporium, Coffee Inn and Emporium maybe. It's Standing in the Shadows, Bigfoot Stories from Southeastern Ohio by Doug Waller. Um, so I really look forward to talking to you about that because I don't think I've gotten to talk to you too much about Bigfoot and I love Bigfoot stories. I listen to a lot of podcasts, uh, Bigfoot Terror in the Woods, Sasquatch Chronicles. Um, I told my husband we are putting it on the calendar. I want to go to the Bigfoot Festival in, I think it's Logan, Ohio, um, in August. So I made him put it on his calendar so that he doesn't schedule a fishing tournament. Uh, here's that other Lucy scorebook that I picked up, Things We Hide from the Light. 
Um, I think it is the second one in the Knock Em Out series. Pretty sure. Um, and in the things we never got over, the two main characters, um, it's the one's brother and then a friend that comes to town. And you so you start seeing their story in that book. And then this is their story that, that like picks up where the other one left off. So super excited about that. I picked this up at Wheatberry Books in Chillicothe. This is my, my second um, visit to that bookstore. And um, I think this is a good... Um, Good thing to say. I hope they think it too. So I really wanted to go to Wheatberry. I have um, a friend from the planner community that I know lives close to there and uh, had talked about the bookstore. And uh, we went back in November, I think it was like around Thanksgiving. Um, my husband and I like took a little trip up there, um, went to like out to eat coffee shops, bookstores. He was looking for a gun. Uh, so gun stores out in the middle of nowhere. Um, and we were we went to this bookstore and it was just like not, I'm just not a good day for it. I don't know. Like, um, some people that were in there were like super loud and it was like crowded trying to like get around and look. And then I don't know, it just, it hit me wrong. Um, and I was with, on a girl's trip a couple weekends ago and we went back through Chilla Coffee and we went in and it was delightful. I mean, it was delightful. I don't know if it was the owner that was working the counter, but whoever it was, the salesperson was just so personable. I bought the candle there, the sexy librarian candle, and I bought this. Um, I want to say I even had another book. I don't know. I don't see it on here, but I feel like I bought another book. Maybe I put it back. But they have a section of some uh, gently used books, too. And I remember the first time I was there, I got like a book of the um, book of the month club there for like five dollars or something. Um, so I don't know. It was just lovely this time. They had great displays in the, the store. When you walked in, it was very welcoming and the way that you moved around the store. I don't know. It hit differently and it was great. I'm so glad we went back. Um, I definitely left with a much better experience than the first time I was there. And that I'm sure like I'm not even, I'm not, there's no blame there. I love independent bookstores because they have their own flavor. Um, and that's anywhere that you go, a coffee shop, a boutique or anything the mix of people that are in there at the time sometimes are just blah, like that doesn't lead to a great experience. Um, all right. I picked up another copy of the Christmas train from the book Rack and Murray for $4. I already own this book. I have given it to everyone I know. I love, love, love this as a Christmas read. So I just picked up another copy. When we were there for spring break, um, one of the days ran by the Goodwill there in Murray and picked up a copy of Cinder um, by is it Marissa Meyer, I think? It doesn't have a dust jacket on it. Yeah, Marissa Meyer. I have read um, just this first one in the Lunar Chronicles. I'll look and see if I have um, uh, a Goodreads review out there for not. If, if not, I'll add. But love that. It's a young adult um, novel. And I have to think about it to think about like what genre it is. It's kind of fantasy, kind of science fiction. Super good series. Um, at Goodwill, I also picked up a copy of this Bruno Chief of Police. I've already read this, um, and I think I even have a copy, so that might be one that I need to gift. On the way down to spring break, there was a huge storm on Friday night here where we live in Ohio, and um, we were afraid to leave our house, and then something happened. So we stayed an extra day before we headed down there, which means we were traveling down there on a Saturday morning instead of a you know Friday after work kind of thing. Um, so that allowed us to stop at an independent bookstore in Eddyville, Kentucky. It's called the Shire Bookstore. Loved it. Um, just really interesting. You know, from the outside, it's like in a strip mall, so it doesn't look like anything special. But as soon as you walk in, she really has it set up uh, to have its own distinct flavor to it. I bought this book. She had some new and used books in there. This one is Before the Coffee Gets Cold. This is on my summer reading list. I have meant to read this book forever. Um, so picked it up and now it's on my reading list. I don't have it with me. I think I took it to school today, but I also bought an Agatha Christie, like one of these vinyl stickers. Like I like to buy these at coffee shops and such and add them to, you know, these thermoses that we drink out of. Um, and there was an Agatha Christie one there. Loved it. And then she also had one Agatha Christie passenger to Frankfurt. So I picked that one up. It was $5. And I picked up this Riley Sager. Now this one, I think I paid a bit more for, looks like $12 maybe, but this was a book of the month club in June of 2020. And I believe this is the one that I got and read on NetGalley um, for free. So I have already read this one. 
Um, but I really, really love it. And I often want to recommend it to people. So I went ahead and purchased it. Cause again, it's a book of the moth club and I love those. I, I just love how those look. I think it's a great, um, publication edition. Now I'm not going to go get it, but I probably should. I'll wear it the next video. How's that? Uh, my friend gave me, um, a Hercule Poirot little vinyl sticker and also a Hercule Poirot headband. Um, from Storied Arts, if you've not seen that, boy, are you in for a treat. Storied Arts, Google it. It's amazing. Uh, but I'll wear the um, headband next time when I'm talking to you. All right, that's it for my book haul. Let me move those and we'll talk a little bit of book news before I let you go. Okay, first thing on my uh, book news that I want to make sure that I tell you about. There is an upcoming book festival in Columbus, Ohio. I'm about an hour... Uh, 15, 20 minutes out of Columbus. So I plan to go to this book festival. Um, it is under columbusbookfestival.org. There are going to be authors like Allie Hazelwood, Maggie Smith, um, uh, McMahon. I can't think of what her first, her first name is. Uh, maybe Mindy McGinnis. Um, several just people that I really want to listen to what they have to say. Plus, it sounds very much like our Books by the Banks in Cincinnati that is here in the fall. Um, and because it's in the summer... I plan to go up there. I would like to go up for the weekend, but might just make it for the day. I don't know, um, but I want to read another Allie Hazelwood before I get up there. But check it out, ColumbusBookFestival.org. I don't know if you're following BookBub or not online, um, but their stuff often pops up in my feed. I might get their newsletter. Maybe they're on my Facebook. But they posted an article recently um, at the beginning of May, 16 uplifting books that are out this spring. And it had a lot of good titles on there that I really seem to like their, um, the covers of some of these books. The, the new Curtis Sittenfeld book, Romantic Comedy, is on there. That's on my to-be-read list. Um, but lots of really cool um, books on there, including Emily Henry's new one, Happy Place. Uh, the, the Tom Hanks novel. Again, God, I'm so tempted. Please, somebody read that and tell me, is it worth it? But the making of another major motion picture masterpiece, and I think it's fiction. It is a novel. Um, and I have seen like weird reviews, so I need somebody that I know to read it and tell me if it's worth, worth reading or not. But if it's going to call it uplifting and Tom Hanks, I'll read it. But if you're looking for that, I'll try and link it below, but sometimes linking is a little weird, but it's 16 uplifting books out this spring and it's put out by BookBub. As we are getting ready to head into summer, um, the Modern Mrs. Darcy, again, not sure if that's somebody that you follow online, but I do. I love her articles. It's Ann Bogle. I read a book by her. I can't remember the name of the book, but I'm pretty sure I've talked about that. If not, I will. Um, but uh, she put out an article, 20 life-changing nonfiction books that you can finish in a day. So if you're coming up on summer and you want to spend some time on your porch reading, she's got some good ones on there, including the Anne Lamott book that I talked to you about not too long ago called Help, Thanks, Wow!, um, and I agree, you could easily read it in a day. I didn't. I took weeks to read it because I just read a little bit at a time, but you definitely could. It also has Gift from the Sea on there by Anne Mara Lindbergh, which I found to be an okay book, not great. Again, The Alchemist is on there, and it's by uh, Paulo Coelho, I think is how he says his name. That is one that Oprah touted as like a life-changing book. I didn't feel like it was life-changing, but it's a good read. A Room of One's Own by Virginia Woolf. I do really love that book. Night by um, uh, Eli, is it Eli? Ellie Wiesel, Ellie Wiesel, I think. Um, that is a short one, highly recommended. Okay, so there's that. Might want to look that one up. And I'll try and link below. Pop Sugar recently put out um, an article, the uh, books that are being turned into movies in 2023. Excited that it includes a Taylor Jenkins read. They are doing One True Loves, which I have not read. I think we all know Judy Bloom's Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret is being put out in a movie this year. Um, as well as there's a documentary, documentary just about her. But I've never read Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret. And I should have. It's around my time period. I don't know how I missed that. Pun intended. Uh, but I don't know how I missed that. I, I don't have a copy of it. So I need to find it. Harold in the Purple Crayon. Children's book. Dracula. How many more Dracula adaptations do we need? I don't know, but I will watch them all. Uh, my favorite, of course, is Halloween Party by Agatha Christie, which is technically being produced under the title 
um, A Haunting in Venice. So it's kind of adapted from the novel. I've already read that novel. I read it like early on before I ever started this whole Agatha Christie journey. So I'm super interested in how that's going to work out. But it's Bronig Again, he's the one doing it. The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. I feel like I've talked to you about that and the fact that it's going to be turned into a movie. Um, and I know that not everybody loves that book. I do. I think it's one of the best in the series, if not the best in the series. So throwing that out there, might want to take a look, but it's 12 books becoming movies in 2023 by Pop Sugar. Currently watching the new season of Dog Leash. Um, uh, mm, what's the, it's by James. I can't remember what the author's first name is. It's not Henry James, right? I don't think it's Henry James. Um, but I am currently finishing up the second season and that it is on um, Acorn, I believe, but that's such a good series to watch. and It makes me want to read um, the books. Emily Bronte's Wuthering Heights is being turned into a movie. I think they're calling it Emily, if I'm not mistaken. If you're watching Luther on, um, I can't remember what platform some of these are on, but that is actually uh, from a novel by Cross. The last thing he told me by Laura Dave was turned into a series on Apple TV Plus, which I don't have. I need to read Lessons in Chemistry. I have not read that, and they're turning that into a movie. Killers of the Flower Moon. I've talked to you about this one, and it seems to be closer and closer to getting out there. I don't think I have a date on that yet, um, but super excited about that one. I did read that book, and I loved it. Uh, Colleen Hoover's It Ends With Us is being turned into a movie with Blake Lively and Justin Baldoni. I don't know who he is. Um, the Pale Blue Eye on Netflix actually has an Edgar Allan, o, uh, Edgar Allan Poe connection somehow. I think it's Edgar Allan Poe as a young cadet, but I haven't watched that yet. I have not watched um, Taylor Jenkins Reads Daisy Jones and the Six. That came out in March on um, Prime, I believe. I have the book St. X, haven't read it yet, but it's going to be on Hulu. I'm watching the Will Trent series. I don't know if you are, but you should be. It's so good. It is a detective procedural kind of um, movie or TV series. It's very much like a monk. It's not humorous, but like monk, well, kind of. Um, but, you know, that quirky kind of detective who has special skills, it's that kind of a show. But that is actually from a Karen Slaughter series, so I would like to read that. Riley Sager's Home Before Dark is becoming a movie. Is that the one I just talked to you about? It might be. Maggie Stefader's Shiver is being turned into a movie. Gentleman in Moscow will be on Showtime. Uh, the Color Purple is being turned into one by Alice Walker. And Love and Gelato, which is a young adult book I have not read, but that's supposed to be coming out on Netflix. Whew. All right, I think we're good. Um, that takes you through the books I've read since the last time we talked, um, some revisits and corrections, a book haul, and then some of these, oh, I pulled them up here and then I didn't show them to you. Hmm, let's see what, we have some other things here on the table before I say goodbye. Um, I'm trying to read this Anderson's Fairy Tales. That's on my short list. Um, our next Agatha that I need to read by next Friday is Cards on the Table. I am reading this. Why has nobody told me this before? It's nonfiction, and I want to pass that on to my son's um, fiance. So I need to read that within the next, they're coming in like two weeks. So I need to get it read. I am working through this one, The Subtle Art of Not Giving. <clears throat> um, my next Colleen Hoover is Ugly Love. Oh, um, uh, Sharon Draper's Out of My Mind. I'm pretty sure it's getting very close to coming out on the screen. There's the last thing he told me that got turned into um, a series. Uh, Roll Dolls, the BFG, is being turned into a movie. There's The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. There's Agatha Christie's Halloween Party. And there's another copy of Halloween Party. Um, so I forgot I had those here. I'm leaving those books that they're turning into movies on my... Um, desk here and I am going to make sure that I have good reads out there for you and then I will give you updates on that. I'm trying to do better on the hey these are books that are being turned into movies or that you should be um, looking for. That's Stella. She's right down there and she is like staring out at the backyard to see what might be happening. Um, but I'll keep you updated on some of those. I've been meaning to do that for a long time. <sighs> that was lovely wasn't it? Um, so I've been filming for just over two hours. I will cut that down as much as I can for you, but you know I'm not good at it. So listen to as much as you want. Watch as much as you want. 
Thank you for spending time with me in my library. I love being able to talk to you and give you great recommendations. I hope that your to be read list is long <laughs> and that you have your summer uh, reading list started. I'm getting my kids started on those next week. We're making those summer bucket lists uh, and we always have a read section on there. So I'm going to see, I'm going to play around with what mine looks like this year. I usually just do it on paper, but thinking about maybe doing it on Canva or making a poster. I don't know. Going to play around with that. I'd love to see what you have if you have some other way that you're doing that. As always, I am happy to be your friendly librarian. All of the books that I talk about, um, I try and get Goodreads reviews out there when I read them or when I'm catching you up with them. You can get any of these books at your public library for free. You do not have to go and purchase them. But if you do, remember, you can usually find a lot of these that I talk about because I talk about new books and old books and all those in between. Um, and I get most of my books thrifted. A lot of the ones that I uh, read on e-reader or audio, I'm getting for Lib from Libby, which is from my public library for free. Let's be friends. Hit the subscribe and like button. Let me know what you're reading, what you want to read. Comment, email, message me, follow me on Facebook. Keep in touch, folks. Enjoy.